Picture this. You've had this game idea in your head for such a long time. Maybe you have a day job, so when you come back home from your normal job, you spend countless hours researching about coding, about the gaming industry, maybe you've even hired some designers, maybe you've read hundreds of articles, watched hundreds of videos, and attended countless webinars, all in order to refine your game and make the best game possible. The big day has arrived and you're ready to release your game. You come, you click the release button, and crickets, silence. In the best case, you get maybe around a thousand downloads, but in the more realistic and common case, you get maybe 10 or a couple hundred downloads. You start to become a little doubtful and fearful. Maybe people don't really like my game. Maybe I'm not that good of a coder, or maybe this entire industry is just not for me. But you don't give up just yet. You go out and because you believe your game, you go out and you push your game out organically. You go to platforms like Instagram, Facebook, Reddit, TikTok, and YouTube, and you push out and you put content out of your game. But even if you get a couple downloads here and there, it seems like the game is starting to die down. Frustrated and annoyed and feared, you go to the only thing that you know, that this mythical thing that people in the game development world is talking about, user acquisition. And even though you don't have a lot of budget, let alone a lot of experience with user acquisition, you go to platforms like Facebook or Google AdWords and you try to run some campaigns. You do that just to find out that your budget has run out in around a day or so without any noticeable result. This story is all too common and this experience is something that most indie developers go through. So before we go further into the video, I just want to reassure you that you're not alone and that there is a solution to this problem. This solution is actually quite simple and better than that, it's actually free, but usually it gets overlooked. And this solution that I'm talking about is what we like to call ASO, which means App Store Optimization. Now you may have heard before of App Store Optimization and you may have some misconceptions about it, so let me clear real quick what App Store Optimization means. App Store Optimization is the process of tweaking and optimizing certain things in your game listing in order to advance basically in the ranks of the App Store. We do that in order to get more downloads. Higher ranks mean higher visibility, which eventually means more users, which means a happy developer. But before we jump into the technicals, why should you as an indie developer care and actually invest time into App Store optimization instead of going and spending time or money in user acquisition or marketing or all these other tools that you have available? Well, as an indie developer, the truth is you have two things that you can invest. You can either invest money or you can invest your time. Taking into consideration the fact that most indie developers don't really have a lot of budget, let alone experience, to run user acquisition campaigns, your best bet is to invest time into learning App Store optimization. Now, considering the fact that 40% of apps and game downloads actually come from people searching the App Store, that's a pretty good bet. Additionally, as an indie developer, you want to make sure that everything is optimized to the best ability possible. This is kind of the same principle that we follow here at Yoda One with our product Mass, Managed Ad Services. We know that as an indie developer, you have so many things you need to worry about. You need to worry about developing the actual game, pushing out updates, making sure that users are happy, marketing, user acquisition. The last thing we want is to put another thing for you to worry about, monetization. So instead, we take that to our team of experts and they optimize the game for you, right? So this is exactly what you want to do with App Store optimization as well. Now you might be thinking, well, my game is already kind of successful, I'm a bit bigger, right? So why should I care about App Store optimization? And actually, if you're an indie developer, you should also listen to what I'm about to say, because there will come a point in time where you will also be in these shoes and in this position where your game is already successful and you're thinking to yourself, well, if everything is working properly, why should I change anything in my App Store optimization? The answer here is that you can never know where you can reach when you change things. If you become too complacent, especially when your game is already successful and you're kind of competing with the big sharks, you're risking your game drowning and getting swallowed in this sea of big players. If you don't test new things, if you don't refresh things up and try different things, your game will die down. Now, that's the negative, right? But we also have a positive with App Store optimization for big developers, which is you never know the upside. 
we've had and we've seen developers that are already making a good amount of revenue and are seeing a good amount of players in their game but when they change the app store optimization they double the revenue so i always always recommend whether you're an indie developer or already an experienced and big developer always invest time and effort into app store optimization you don't know how much it's going to change your game so this is all fantastic but enough with the chit chat let's jump into how to actually do app store optimization now app store optimization is a pretty big topic and i don't want to overwhelm you especially if you're an indie developer so what i'm going to do is i'm going to give you three very simple but very impactful changes that you can implement right after watching this video that will make a big change for you in your app store optimization journey so let's jump right into it the first change that you can do is keywords you all know that both the stores both app store and google play work on an algorithm right there isn't a person sitting in a dark room checking apps all day and deciding this one will be higher this one will be lower right it's all based on an algorithm and when we're working with algorithms the most important thing that we can do is optimize our keywords now how do you actually do that the thing to keep in mind with keywords is that you want to be unique but not to the point where your keywords don't have any search volume you want to keep a good balance between search volume but also don't take a word that is too saturated. Now, how do you actually do that? Well, fortunately, there are a lot of tools out there that you can use to find out good keywords for your game. Tools like Apredar, Keyword Tool, or any other tool really that allows you to check for keywords for your app. Actually, we here at Mass and Yoda One, we are also developing a tool for our developers that will allow them to check and see what good keywords they can use for their apps. Once you do that, you want to take these keywords that you found that have a good balance between saturation and search volume and start incorporating them into your title, into your subtitle, in App Store, into your description. And basically everywhere that you can use these keywords, you want to use them. Quick tip, don't overdo it. If you just put keyword after keyword after keyword after keyword, App Store is not going to like that and Google Play as well. And you're probably going to get lower in the ranks. So find these good keywords and incorporate them into your game listing. The second most important thing that you can do with App Store optimization is creatives. This means icon, videos, and images. These will be your best friends when people actually see your app. And why is that? When people actually come and they see your game, they need to be excited. They need to think in their heads, wow, this looks interesting. I want to check this game out. And this sounds like something really intimidating to do, but it's actually quite simple if you follow the right steps. For icon, you don't want to take an icon that is overused, right? We've all seen this story before where a popular game blows up. It has a lot of traction, a lot of traffic, a lot of players. And maybe in a month's time, you see like 30 other games using the almost exact same icon, right? So you don't want to be that person. You want to stand out from the crowd with your icon. That being said, you can also go ahead and check your competitors, right? This is what we call modeling. If you already know a competitor in your niche that is already successful, there is no need to reinvent the wheel. You can go ahead and check out what they're doing and take that, model that into your game. Now, when I say model, I don't mean copy. What I mean is let's take, for example, you have a horror game. And if you're seeing a lot of successful horror game using the main protagonist in their icon, then you can take your main protagonist and put it in your game icon. The second thing that you should change is your videos and image sequence. Now with the videos, the most important thing to do is to grab people's attention as fast as possible. And we have this kind of good rule that I like to follow is that the first five seconds of the video should make you want to watch the next five seconds. And these five seconds should make you want to watch the next five and so on and so forth, eventually to check out the images and download the game. What this means is that you need to use the most exciting and amazing features about your game and also unique in order to make people feel, oh my God, this looks amazing. So if you have a war game, maybe put the most crazy features inside the game, right? I don't know, helicopters, missiles blowing up, flamethrowers. If you have a racing game, maybe put the most intense parts of the race, people drifting, people crashing into each other, police chases, okay? So use the best features of the game. But not only that, another thing to keep in mind is to use advanced parts of the game. You don't really want to showcase the beginning of the game because that doesn't really compel a lot of people. Players and users that are coming to the App Store or that want to play games, 
they crave progression and so and so if you show them where can they get in the game eventually even if they never get there that's still fine because that sparks up their imagination their feelings and most app downloads will happen because of feelings a good example of that is rodeo stampede one of the other one's best performing games now a little secret i've been playing rodeo stampede for a long time and i still haven't gotten to the point where i play and actually see what i see in the videos but the videos was what made me download the game in the first place because it has such amazing and cool things in it okay so use the best features in your game and the most unique features to put inside your videos and your images finally the description both the short and the long description you want to make the description as simple as possible while also keeping a good balance of keywords again you don't want to spam keywords here you don't want to put just keyword after keyword after keyword after keyword because the algorithm doesn't like that it doesn't make sense what you do want to do is use keywords but incorporate them in kind of a story way people are emotional creatures right humans are emotional creatures and if you can tell a story if you can make users and people that search for your game to imagine how would they feel when they actually download and play your game you've won this battle now how to actually do this in reality is actually pretty simple the biggest tip that i can give you is use stories use verbs instead of nouns make people imagine how are they going to feel what are they going to do when they download the game let's go back to the war example command your army let's go back to the racing example drift in supercars right make me imagine how is it going to look like what am i going to do exactly when i download your game when you capture people's attention like that and you keep it simple whether it's with emojis or simple words you're gonna win people over using the emotional factor so these are your three action items keywords creatives and description both long and short i have another bonus advice for you guys and it is reviews reviews is one of those things that are very very important for app store optimization and for user experience and how they view the game but it's also a very useful tool for developers to use inside their app store optimization now what do i mean by that if you see people using the same kind of keywords in the reviews take that and use it in your title if you're seeing people talking about specific features or things that you can do inside the game take these features and put them inside the videos and inside the images that you're using if you see certain phrases that make a lot of sense put those phrases in the description when you do that the people that are going to arrive at your game listing page will resonate much more with everything that is on that page the keywords will make sense to them the images and the videos will compel them and the description will talk exactly how they talk talk to your potential audience and the best way to do it is to use the language that is already in your reviews so here are your three action items i hope you found them useful if you have any questions feel free to drop them down below we'll make sure to answer each and every one of them and if you like the video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel a lot of similar videos are coming soon from yodo one and you're more than welcome to join the best monetization solution on the planet manage ad services mass link that is in the description and i'll see you guys soon peace